Why do we read all this? To show the importance of the institution of marriage. When, when the Lord set that up, that was the first thing that Satan attacked. He wasn't offering them shrimp. He could have went to them and said, you know what? Y'all can eat shrimp. You know what? Pork chops is good, Adam. Or pork chops is good, even if it wasn't the dietary law. It wasn't the ceremonial law. It was the institution of marriage. So uh, when, when brothers get to a point where they want to prove, you know, when sisters get to a point where they want to prove, it's, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy matter. Because you, you choosing who you want to spend the rest of your life with. You choosing your life partner. It's like you starting a business. And, and once you choose this business partner, you stuck with that person unless for fornication, right? So it's, it's a heavy, 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 heavy matter. So the, the title of the class is um, Proving Colon A Sister with Good Hair. <laughs> Proving <laughs> a sister who with good hair. And hair is an acronym. I know sister's like, what? Proving a sister with good hair. So, officer, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis 2.17. The two. book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 17. And I, and I got another class uh, called, <laughs> this, this class is tailored towards the brothers as far as proving go. And I got one that's tailored towards the sisters, maybe next week. But we, we sort of going to deal with the brothers to give them an idea on what they should be looking for when they prove a sister. But at the same time, sisters can take this class and say, these are the things that I should model myself after if I'm looking for a righteous man. It works both ways, right? All right. Uh, Genesis 2, 17 and 18, officer. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, therefore, thereof thou shalt surely die. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So you got to examine how things work when you come into the truth. Because how, how it works today is how it worked back then. And this is what I mean. God, he, he made Adam, right? He gave Adam the commandments. This is the equivalent of a brother coming into the truth or a sister coming into the truth and they're getting their self right. They, they learn the commandments, right? They learn what they can eat, what they can't eat. They learn the, the, the roles of marriage. They learn how to keep Passover, right? They learn that they got to keep their beard, that they can't smoke, right? And then over a course of time, that brother or that sister would be ready to get married. It was, Adam was the same way. God, he gave him a home, which was the Garden of Eden, right? He gave him the commandments, and then he gave him a wife. It's, it's the same thing for us. Read, read 18 again, officer. Verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And when that time comes, that sister has to be, brothers, that sister has to be a help meet for you. Meaning she, she should be, and, it, and, it, and that comes with time, right? Because you have to build that sister up and groom her. But her mindset should be also that I have to be a help meet for him, meaning just for him. Meaning y'all fit, like, fit snug like a puzzle. If you do it the right way, then the scriptures say she was ordained for you from the, to you from the very beginning. That's, that's how that worked. Get, um, get, uh, read verse 21, verse 21 through 24. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So it said when Eve was made, 
she was brought to the man. That's why a, a woman is given away in marriage the way she is. It was like that from the very beginning. It says she was brought unto the man. Also, you see rib, you know, sometimes, just as a quick sidebar, sometimes we be, brothers say, well, my rib, th this is why. Read on, officer. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman mm -hmm. because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh flesh, meaning they a system. The sister don't have her own mind anymore. Her mind is after her husband. They, they want flesh. Right? So, uh, we, we're going to go through it as, as the lesson goes on, but um, I'm going to make the point on how when a, when a brother's proven, he should be looking for a sister who, who has the strengths in the areas that he's weak at. For an example, like we was talking last night to the, to the brothers, if, if, a, if a single brother is bad with finances, he should make sure that the sister he's proven has, you know, she can deal with money. That, that, you know, that's her thing. And then together, they'll be strong at that. And her weaknesses should be his strengths. It worked hand in hand. And it, it didn't change in the New Testament. Give me Matthew, real quick. Just, just for precept's sake. This never changed in the New Testament. Uh, start at verse, let's see. Start at verse 4, obviously, verse nine, I mean, chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. So Christ is quoting Genesis. He said, haven't you read in Genesis that when God made them, he made them uh, male and female? Read. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave, unto his, cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. And those two, twain means two, those two should be one flesh. So it's, it's the same thing. The commandments never change. They never change. The only thing that was done away with was what, brothers? Law sacrifice. Everything else still stands. Read on. Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. I mean, the institution of marriage is, is permanent. Unless, read. They said unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Mm -hmm. So Christ said this, and then they asked Christ, okay, so if that's true, then why, why did Moses allow divorce? Read. He said, he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, the institution of marriage was forever. Read. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth committeth adultery. So, unless for fornication, brothers, the sister you take is going to be the sister you got to deal with forever. Right? So, it's a thing, a heavy matter. It's not like... Uh, Two brothers or two sisters may get into it, and you, they may have to uh, apply Matthew 18, right? And they, they, in that, let's say, let's say Lyle tells me something personal, and then I, I spill the beans, so to speak, right? He may forgive me, but he may not allow me to ever get close to him like that again, right? He we still have respect for one another. He still love his brother, but you know he he may not deal with me like that. That that may cause me that friendship. But with marriage, it's not like that. You you got to work through those things because it's it's until death. So a brother may say, okay, how do you correctly, or how do you go about looking for the right things to prove a sister? 
Sirach 6. <clears throat> Sirach 6, chapter 6. Read verse 7 and 8 for me, officer. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get it a friend, prove him first. So this is what we call proving. This is where it come from. The scriptures say, if you will get a friend, prove that friend first. Officer Kaziel, can we get it, the definition of prove? Let's, let's get a uh, definition of the word prove. Oh, I like that. Read the second one for two. The definition of prove, to demonstrate one's abilities or courage. That's what proving is. You're looking to see if the sister or the brother possess certain abilities. Sisters, you got to know whether or not the brother going to be able to take care of you, uh, protect you, provide for you, right? In turn, the, brothers, the brother has to look for things like uh, whether or not the sister is modest, shamefaced, whether or not she, she has, um, what's, the, what's the term? She's family orientated, right? Because you want to have children with their sister, right? And the sister should be learning these things, how to take care of children, right? So on and so forth. Read that again, officer. The six and seven. The book of Sirach, chapter six, verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. And the scriptures say, don't be hasty to credit the sister. Meaning it's a process, brothers. It's a, it's a process. You can't expect to get to know somebody in four months, six months. A brother shouldn't be ready to marry a sister after they don't prove for four to six months. It, that thing take time. If, but in, and even when you get married, you still learning one another, right? You, you still adjusting. You still got to teach the sister. She's still learning how to please you. So it's, it's a process. You can't be hasty to credit uh, the brother or the sister. Read. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Because some, some, some sisters will say will be a, a friend for their own occasion, meaning all you get is the representative at first. But you got to give time for those things to wear away, right? Because when you, you meet somebody, they're going to they uh, tell you or show you the best of them. But as time goes on, you're going to view, if you pay attention the way you're supposed to, then you're going to see the little cracks in the armor, right? You're going to have a chance to see how the sister deal when she's corrected, how she deal with the elder sisters when they get on her. But you got to give those, those things time to show. That's why leadership says um, generally at least a year, right? Generally, at least a year. You got to get that thing some time. Read verse 8 again. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. And it could, and it could be the same thing on the sister's side. So you got to know whether or not the brother really wants to prove you because he's looking for a righteous woman. Not just because he burning. Read. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Because if you prove the brothers, uh, if you prove, if you proven a brother, sister, and you don't prove him correctly, it says he will not abide in the time of trouble. Meaning, y'all don't go through it correctly. It's, it's a y'all lay together. You get pregnant and then the brother out. So the scriptures say, give that thing some time. Give it some time. Get, uh, get for me Genesis 127. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Uh, read verse 28 too. I just want to make a point real quick. You said 28 as well? Uh, yeah, 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. So God created man in his image. When it says man, it's talking about man specifically. 
The woman was created in the image of the man. The woman was not created in God's image. That's why there's no equality there. That's why it's a difference. Read. Male and female created he them. Read. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So from the beginning, the Lord said what? Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. So this is the, this is, uh, the Lord giving the, the instruction or the institution of a family. A family, a, a nation, right? From a husband and wife comes the nation. And a, a lot of times what you'll find is initially somebody's outward appearance is the first attraction. That's how you, you know, it's normal. We're attracted to people on how we think they look, right? That's, that's normal. But what's within a person is, is what determines whether or not that attraction lasts for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That's what determines that thing. So I'm going to say it again. The, the first thing, uh, let me see, let me find the quote. The outward appearance initially is, is how people are attracted to one another, right? But over time, what's on the inside determines whether or not that attraction lasts. Give me Mark 7, 21, officer. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. The book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21. Let me get it. You said wait? Yeah, let me get it. It's what Christ said. The same thing. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, mm -hmm. adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. So it says from within proceed all these things out of the, the mind. Your heart is your mind. When it says the heart, it's talking about a person's mind because it starts first with the thought, right? Read the next verse. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So it's, it's what comes out of a person that defiles them, right? That, that's, that's how you won't be able to tell, brothers, if the sister is this way or that way by, by her actions or by his actions. Same thing. It works both ways. So the title of the class, again, is, is Proving a Sister with Good Hair. The H, the H Brothers starts, stands for, and sisters, stands for health. Prove a sister with good health. That's how you can look at that thing. The hair in title is an acronym. The H is for health. Give me Sirach 36 and 22, officer. And, and that doesn't, you know, we, we come into the truth. A lot of us have ailments and infirmities and different things like that. I'm not saying if, if a person has a problem, then you shouldn't prove them or, or that or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. Because as you prove the brother, as you prove the sister, y'all can discuss those things. And if the brother or the sister feel that they, they're fine with whatever that thing may be, then okay. It's, it's, it's all fine in the Lord. The book of Sirach, chapter 36, <clears throat> verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Mm -hmm. And a man loveth nothing more better. So I want to I want to talk about health from a aspect of like a physical attraction, right? Because that's the first thing. So and you can list it like this: health. The subcategories is going to fall is going to fall like this: the appearance of a person. Next is going to be uh, health concerning their body. The next one is going to be after the mind. And then the next is going to be uh, a sister's spirit, brothers. So appearance, body, mind, 
and spirit. This is what you should be looking for in the proven process. Yeah, you want to know if the sister can cook. Yeah, you want to know what the sister, what's her favorite color. Yeah, you want to know <laughs> what she like to watch on TV, right? You want to know what type of man she like. So you talk about those things, right? But the, these, this is when you sort of get past that initial stage of proving, when you've learned the small, minute things, you, you start really talking about what matters in the marriage, right? All right, uh, read that for me, officer. Read it again. Verse 22. <clears throat> the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. So it says the beauty of a woman makes a man happy. Every, every man likes a beautiful woman, and, that, and that's a relative. So there's nothing wrong with that per se, but that shouldn't be all the brother is looking for when he wants to get married. Um, I remember it was who wedding? I think it was Mark on's wedding. And a uh, brother came to leadership and he said, you know, leadership, uh, I want to prove a sister. And y'all got any sisters up here? He was from another school. And we asked the brother, we said, okay, well, what kind of sister are you looking for? And this is the trick question. Just to give y'all some game. This is the trick question. You say, what kind of sister are you looking for, bro? And he said, I want, I want a sister that's pretty. You ain't ready to prove, brother. Because he's looking for the sister for what? For lust. And we, we all know it's natural to like somebody that you, phys that you physically attracted to. We know that, but, you know, what are you looking for in a sister? So it says, a man loves uh, the beauty of a woman, right? But that, that shouldn't be all that he's looking for. First Timothy 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. It shouldn't be all about what she looks like. You know, leadership said all the time, those things over time fade away. You the know, book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Let me, let me get it. Uh, go ahead. In like manner also, the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it's better for a sister that she adorns herself in modest apparel. Read. With shamefacedness. That she adorns herself with shamefacedness. So this, these are his, um, Timothy, I mean, Paul is telling us, brothers, what you should be looking for in a sister, what kind of qualities she should have. She should adorn herself in modest apparel. That means... She shouldn't be a sister that leadership is regularly, or the, or the elder sisters is regularly having to get on because of her uh, garments being too tight around the waist. Or she always, she always um, have a problem with them being too short maybe at the outings, something like that. So the scriptures say that she should adorn herself in modest apparel, read. With shamefacedness. And the sister should be Shame face. Can we let's get that definition off Kazil? Shame faced. Put it up on the screen, officer. So the definition, I'm just reading it right quick, obviously. It says feeling or expressing shame or embarrassment. But what that's going into is you see the synonym it says um, contrite, repentant. That's what it's talking about, a sister that's shame faced. Meaning a sister, if, if a sister sees uh, an officer and a soldier speaking, she shouldn't feel comfortable with just approaching them and buttoning the conversation in the midst of their speech. That's not shame face. A sister shouldn't feel comfortable um, always, in a brother, always in the brother's face. Now, we know it's, it's different things where uh, the sisters and brothers work collectively on teams. That's different. But you, you shouldn't, it should, the sisters shouldn't be over here after the Sabbath. And you got that one sister on this side in, the, in the, one of the brothers' face. That's not shame face. That's what that's talking about. Go back, Officer Yehoshua. Um, read verse 9 again. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also that the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. So Paul is letting us know it is not about 
is, is, is exactly it's not about the, the physical appearance. Read. But and, and, and those things aren't bad. It, the description of Sirach said, yeah, a man love a woman, a beautiful woman, right? So the sisters should take care of themselves, right? It should wear the, the, the face jewelry. It should wear the, you know, the earrings and all this stuff, the get up. That, that, that stuff is good, right? But that shouldn't be all what the sister is about. And you, and you can tell that spirit, if a sister dealing like that, right? You can tell that spirit. It, it still should be modest, Read on, officer. But which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. So that's, what, uh, that's how a woman should carry herself. She should be professing through her actions the things that are godly with good works. You should be able to see, okay, this sister, she's modest. Uh, she's sober. She take care of herself. She's shamefaced. You should be able to see those things. Go back to Sirach. Uh, give me, give me, give me Sirach 25 and 21. Sirach 25, 21. This is, this is how we deal with one another in the world. The opposite of what this is about to say. Let me get it, officer. Sirach 25, 21. And then get me Sirach 11 and 2 and 3. Good. Yep. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. So, Jaliel, explain to me what I mean. Explain the scripture. <clears throat> yeah, so um, don't. Yeah, don't get caught up in the outward appearance. Um, can, you, can you read again? Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Right, and don't desire her for, uh, like, sexual things. So you, sh you should be... You, you, you should be proven for the right reasons. Correct, correct, correct. All praises, all praises. Now get Sirach 11 and 2. And I, wanna, I want one of the sisters to tell me, explain what this means. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Anyone, any one of the sisters want to take a stab at it? <laughs> what we call on somebody. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> Shalom, sis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was the question again? Uh, read it again for officer. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Um, don't be lusting after the brother either. Like, y'all are gods, y'all look handsome, but um, don't just want him because he look good. And in the latter part, don't not want him because he may not be comely, but he can be the man that you need to lead you. That's a, that's a very good answer, sis. All praise. Give this sis the hand. All praises. All praises. That's, that's a good answer. <laughs> so you saying, sis, if he look like Beetlejuice, is okay? As long as he keep the commandments? <laughs> Some hey, sisters like Beetlejuice. Hey, hey put Beetlejuice on, Beetlejuice on the screen, Officer Cosby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put Beetlejuice over there. Let me see if the sister, let me see if she's serious about what she's saying. So you saying, sis, put it up there. And, I, and I'm not picking on the brother condition. This is the first person that came to mind. So what you saying, sis, as long as he keep, they said, uh-uh. <laughs> as long as he keep the commandments. You say you're the right one for somebody. <laughs> Just not me. <laughs> that's funny. All right, all praises. But but that, that's what it means. You know, and, and you know what that you know what, what that's really saying, sisters? Sometimes a woman's expectations of Prince Charming is set too high. 
Sometimes it's set too high. I'm not saying, like, I, like we said, like the Bible say, you know, you got to find somebody that you're attracted to because you don't want to be stepping outside of the marriage, right? So get somebody you're attracted to. But, sisters, he might not be 6'1". He might not have a full beard. He might not be, he might not have hazel eyes. <laughs> Give me something else. <laughs> he might not have a six pack. So, so sometimes sisters' expectations aren't realistic. Sisters like that most of the time. Brothers, brothers, sometimes brothers bad, but most of the time it's the sisters. Most of the time it's the sisters. So, uh, as far as health, yeah, prove somebody that you find physically attractive, but that's not the most important thing, right? Right, brothers? All right, give me Sirach, uh chapter 30 and verse 14. And read to 16. So this, so this, is, this is another thing. <clears throat> the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 14. And, and again, you know, those among us, you know, we all have ailments. We all can have ailments and different things that we um, uh, have to deal with, impediments and things like that. But oh, this is just an overall um, suggestion. From the Lord. Read it. Sirach chapter 30, verse 14. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. So it says it's better for you to have strength in your body, for you to be healthy than great riches. Because what you if you if you if you sick, then it doesn't benefit you any to have all that, right? So um on the, you know, we just pick it on the sisters a little bit, but on the other side, sometimes what we have with brothers is they'll be hasty to, how can I say it in a nice way? Brothers would be hasty to prove just because they burn it, right? I feel, I feel like it's worse on the, on the, on the brother's side. Uh, I know sisters go through things, but Women are a little bit different. Sometimes brothers say, "Give me, I'll prove the tree. Give me the tree." Brothers, brothers, that bad sometimes. <laughs> you you can marry goats now, can't you? <laughs> Didn't they make that a law? Nah, brother, you can't marry the goat. So it says, "What officer read it again?" Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in body. Read. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. So good health is above all gold. It's invaluable. Read. And a strong body above infinite wealth. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Meaning, brothers, the sister has to be taking care of herself, right? A strong body. That, that can go into dieting. They can go into fasting. You know, her, her upkeep, it says a strong body. That encompasses all of that. Read. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. And no joy above the joy of the mind. Being, being fine in your mind when you got a sound body, you got good health, right? And, and that can be relative to this point. I'm not, I'm not telling the brothers that the sister has to have the, um, the gym goer physique. That's not what I'm saying, right? The sister... Got to be taking care of herself, though, right? And then if, if maybe the brother had got that spirit on him, maybe he's the, the gym rat, you know, and then he get with the sister, right? He help her get more and fit if that's a thing for them, right? So a healthy body, a healthy body. Sisters got to take care of herself and brothers got to look for that thing. Sirach chapter 6, verse 37. A sound mind. <clears throat> this is what we mean by a sound mind. Sirach 6, 37. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 37. Let thy mind thy be what? Upon hmm? It says, let thy what? Let thy mind be upon the ordinance of the Lord mm -hmm. and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart 
and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So a sister that has a sound mind, brothers, her mind is going to be her mind is going to be uh, what the Bible says she should be doing, meaning it's, it's going to be scriptural. She's going to have basic knowledge of the Bible, right? She's going to know, she may even know how to break down her tribe, her specific tribe, right? Preceptual knowledge is a little bit different for women because the most high deals with the man. It's our job to teach them, whether it's from a leadership standpoint or a husband and wife. So a lot of times we will be sharper, sharper in precepts, brother, but the sisters have to have some mind towards uh, the Lord, right? I mean, she got to be studying too, right? She got to be do, reading her four chapters. Um, she got to know the, the basic things that's required of her as a, as a woman, right? How, how to cook. And I ain't saying she got to be a chef, but she, you know, 20 years old, 22 years old, 26 years old, sister, Need to know how to cook more than uh, eggs or oodles and noodles. <laughs> he said cereal. <laughs> yeah, he said hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> that's, a, that's a single brother answer. <laughs> he said cereal. But yeah, the sister, you know, the sister, mine have to be according to righteousness. Read that again, officer. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. So, sisters, your mind have to be upon the ordinances of the Lord. I mean, uh, always thinking about God's laws. Read. And meditate continually in his commandments. And, she, and the sister, sis, you got to be meditating in God's commandments. Because even though the most I deal with the men more, when the man and the woman have children, then it's going to be the sister's job to teach the children. So now she becomes a teacher. And a lot of times what you'll find is when you first, the, from the time you first come into truth up until that first, maybe I'll say maybe three years, that's where a person learns the most. You're not really on a lot of teams. All you, got to do, all you have to do is study in a sense, right? So a sister really should be in the Bible just as much as the brother. Now the brother's knowledge will have a tendency to increase more but a sister, sister, y'all can't be light, right? Y'all are the ones that prepare the next generation to come along. Read on, officer. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. And the Most High will give sisters wisdom at their own desire. So you have sisters like Judith. You have sisters like uh, Deborah, you have sisters like Sarah, you have sisters like, somebody give me another one, Esther, it's a good one, you have sisters like Susanna, right, you have sisters like that, that they, they show their wisdom based off, or they, they show their importance based off, um, or their power based off uh, what was righteousness according to the Bible and not uh, marriage is 50-50 or uh, well, I work a job too. This is both our money. That ain't, that ain't what they're talking about. Wisdom according to what the Bible says. Give me uh, Proverbs 15 and 4, officer. This is transitioning to a sound spirit. Proverbs 15 and 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So it says a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. When it says tongue, it's just talking about communication, brother, right? What you communicate with the sister about, you're going to know whether or not, okay, this sister light, this sister, or this sister study. You know, she, she pay attention during the Sabbath class. Read. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. But a sister who mine is on Cardi B, Atlanta Housewives, um, Game of Thrones, foolishness, it says it's, it's going to be a breach in her spirit. Why? Because what you take in is what you're going to see in her actions. What she takes in on a weekly basis, that's what you're going to see in her actions, right? If she, if she is on... Uh, TikTok and Instagram more than she studying, then that's a red flag, right? 
and unless she's like on the social media team, of course, something like that, right? But if she's just on TikTok and she she always posts uh, videos by herself, or she always checking her hair, some some foolishness like some foolishness like that, then that's a red flag. Read it again, officer. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A perverseness is a breach in the spirit. Or, else, or in other words, her, her spirit, the spirit of the Lord is not on her that strongly because she don't study. So on and so forth. Get me Colossians 3 and 8 also. And then give me 1 Corinthians 15.33. So, sister conversation should be godly. Brother conversation should be godly, especially, especially a sister. But, and here, here's the thing. When, when, and this is for y'all to know also, sisters, when a brother and a sister prove, a, a sister has a tendency to take the lead of the man. So it's going to start with the brothers, Right? She, she, her, her spirit can be off, but if you allow it to go on, that's what's going to make the difference, right? So you, you may have to correct the sister, right? Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 8. But now ye also put off all these. I'm sorry, let me get it. I thought I was on it. Read it again. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. So these are things that a sister should be putting off as she's repenting. Read it again. But now ye put also put off all of these. Anger. Anger. Wrath. So, wait. Anger. That's something for a brother to look for as he's, if he's proving a sister. Whether or not she's always uh, angry. And what? Read the next one. Wrath. Whether or not the sister is always wrathful, meaning every, every time you speak to the sister, there's always something bad going on with her. Whether it's, it's at work, it's at school, she always got something going on with one of the sisters in the body. Those types of things, brothers, those type of things you should be picking up on. Those should be the, the, the red flags. It shouldn't be like that. Read. Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy communication Filth, out of your mouth. Filthy communication. Somebody tell me what that mean. Any, anybody? Give me an example. Let me get two examples. I guess when you're proving uh, sexual talk. Okay. Um, um, could you be, be more specific, but not graphic? Going into what you would do to each other in the bedroom. All right, I'll take on that. a physical level. Yeah, I, I take that. I take that. That's a good answer. Let me get a let me get an answer from the sister side. <laughs> Sister's like, I'm writing. I can't answer. I'm writing right now. <laughs> Maybe asking each other what you're wearing or show um, asking to send pictures back and forth. That, that, that's a good one, sis. So, sister, that's, that's a very good one. Sisters, you proving a brother. He should, he, should, he should never ask you what you're wearing. Never. You know why? Because if you go into the Sabbath, he know you're wearing what? Purple and gold. If it's a feast day, he know you're wearing what? Brown and gold. It's, it's that simple. That's, that's a very good answer, sis. That's an answer from experience. That's, that's a very good answer. Brother should never ask you what you're wearing. I don't, I don't care if it's 12 noon and we all head into the bowling alley. Brothers should never ask you what you're wearing, right? Keep things straight because if you veer off to the right or if you veer off to the left, that's where the trouble start. And then maybe it's something little at first, and then the next time it'll be a little bit bigger. Next time be a little bit bigger. Before you know it, both of y'all standing up in front of the congregation. So just keep things straight as possible. Now, I'm not saying the sister can never say something like, <clears throat> Yeah, I just, like, you know, she's she talking about a new hair wrap she got. Or maybe even a new skirt to a degree. But use wisdom, right? Especially into the evening. It should never be a question about what you're wearing. Never. Right? Um, read it again, officer. 
But now ye also put off all of these. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give me, give me the next precept. First Corinthians chapter 15 <laughs> and verse 33. Let him get it. First Corinthians 15, 33. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That goes into what I was just talking about. Evil communications corrupt good manners. But if you, but if you keep things straight, you, you won't ever have to worry about that. Always do things according to the scriptures. Always do things with advisory. And if you don't know whether it's brother, the brother or the sister, get counsel. Don't be afraid to, to go to the elder sisters to ask, and don't be afraid to come to the brothers to ask the same thing, right? We're going to uh, we gonna give you what does say of the Lord <clears throat> at the end of the day. Get, um, let me see where we at. Okay, so that's the H, right? That's the, that's the H. Physical appearance, sound, a sound body, mind, and spirit. The A is for attitude. Sisters, prove a sister with good attitude. That's what the A is for. Verse 30. Sirach 19, 29, and verse 30. I'm sorry. The book of Sirach, chapter 19, and verse 29. A man may be known by his look. Now, now, the Bible is written in a masculine tense, but it says a man or a woman may be known by his or her look. And one that have understanding by his countenance. And, and you're going to be able to tell whether a brother or sister has understanding of God's scripture by their countenance, meaning by how they carry themselves. Meaning some, sometimes you, you'll see a sister and the sister, what, what do they call the thing? What do they call the face the sisters have? Rest in face. Yeah. Sometimes sisters have that. Now, now, sometimes it's, it's called uh, a resting bee face, right? Uh, Officer Kazia, can you, can you find that? Just, oh, give, just give us an example. Sometimes sisters will have this, and, and, she'll, and she may be, <laughs> she may be uh, unapproachable, right? Or sometimes a sister can have that face, and it really be... What's in her mind? It really be it'll really be how she is in in her spirit. <laughs> hey, give, <laughs> give me the one right here, uh, top left. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Sis is gonna be mad at me. Don't do that. Don't, don't. play it. <laughs> All right, put put it out there. Sometimes sisters have this face <laughs> naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, S sisters got the. Go ahead. They don't know that when, rest in rest in B face means when your face is at rest, <laughs> meaning you're not making any face. That's just how you look. It's, it's just stuck. But 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 you unapproachable. You just look mean all the time. <laughs> Read the scripture again, Officer. A man may be known by his look. And one that have understanding by his countenance and when you, thou meetest him. And you'll know somebody by how they look. Meaning what? You can judge. You crazy elves. You can judge a book by his cover. <laughs> this, this some sisters right here. Like, dang. You can't even shalom the sister. And they, and, and. Uh, a person's look when it's talking about a sister that can go into her how she does her makeup, right? Can be can be over the top. Can go into the the umbrellas, right? The eyelids. You going you gonna know? Okay, this sister is a, a, adhering to the the counsel and advice leadership is given in these classes about marriage and the sisters. You gonna be able to tell that, right? You know, you know, we all come in, we sick, we trying to get ourselves right. But after a while, how how we look and dressed and um, presented ourselves in the world should start to fade. And then the brothers, how they carry themselves should start to match what you see at the leadership table, the captains and the bishops and the deacons, right? And the sisters, the same thing with them. They should start 
uh, carrying themselves modestly, right? Respectfully, like, like the wives, like a, a righteous woman, right? So you, you can tell that by somebody's look. You can tell her understanding where she's at up here by how she carries herself. You can be able to see everything. Get me uh, Sirach 2614, officer. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, in verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And here's another thing. It says a silent and loving wife is a gift of the Lord. So what does that mean? If she wanted the sisters, we don't have it. We don't, we, don't, we don't really have, you know, every congregation have their problems, right? For the most part, we don't. But if you, if, if you see a sister that is, uh, she's she always loud, right? She's always causing trouble in the kitchen. I think that, I think the kitchen team has the most problems out of all the team. There's always something going on in the, ki in the kitchen team. Am I right, sis? <laughs> and it's, it's, it's nothing but sisters in there. So that's what you got, right? But the, the sister you proven shouldn't you shouldn't hear that of her, a silent and a loving wife, right? The, 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 the way she carries herself as a single sister, that's how she's going to act when she get married. But it's going to be worse. You know why? Because it's going to be somebody telling her, you got to change. Stop doing that. I don't like this. You're not righteous. So it's going to be worse. You, 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 don't, you don't see it maybe here at the school or while you're proving different things like that. Right? Because everyone's on their best behavior. And rightly so, to, a, to an extent. Right? But uh, you got to look for those things as you're proving, right? And while you're proving, the, the, the brother is the catalyst to help the sister correct and see some of those things, right? Right? So, so keep that in mind. Uh, officer, give me uh, 1 Peter 3 and 1. Um, let me see. Do I want that first? Um, no, first give me... First give me First Kings 1 and 11 through 33. <clears throat> We're going to show the mindset of the sisters back, back in the day, in the biblical days, as we say. To First, First Kings 1 and 11? I did. I think that's the wrong precept, though. Hold up. That might be right. Let me get, let me get that. 1 and 11. Um, First Kings. Yep, no, that's right. First Kings 1 and 11. The book of First Kings, chapter 1 and verse 11. Wherefore, Nathan spake unto Bathsheba. So, so this is when King David had got old. We're going to go through a little bit of history now. This is when King David got old and he was um, about to sleep with his fathers, as the scriptures say, right? He was, he was about to pass. And the kingdom had to be handed to the successor. Y'all with me? All right. So read that again, officer. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba. Stop. Real quick, who is Bathsheba? Anybody can answer. Uh, Solomon's mother. That's correct. All praises. Uh, read it again, officer. Bathsheba was Solomon's mother. <clears throat> Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, Dang. saying, Hast thou not heard? <laughs> I, I forgot to say that. Yeah. I was brother wondering why they didn't answer. I was like, it's right now. Yeah, brother should have just looked down. All right, all praises. So that's Solomon's mother. Read on. Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? So uh, the promise was made that Solomon was going to receive the kingdom when David died. So, but now somebody else is sitting on the throne, so it's a problem. So one of the prophets goes to Bathsheba and say, and she and he's bringing the the issue to her. Read. Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. And it, this was of the Lord because it was already prophesied that Solomon would sit on the throne. Read. Go and get thee unto King David. And say unto him, Didst thou, didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assur Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? 
Why then does, doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. So what he's telling her is, um, go to David and tell him, let him know what's going on. Because David was old. He said, while you're talking with David, I'm going to come in and I'm going to speak the same words. I'm going to confirm, reconfirm what you're saying. Read. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber. And the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, what wouldest thou? And she said unto him, my lord. My thou, what? My lord. So David was the king. This was one of his wives. She paid him obeisance regardless of that, right? Some, you know, the scriptures say that Sarah called Abraham Lord. So you, you see how, this, how the women dealt with the men back then. This was, a common, this was a common thing. Read. My Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king, and Abathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant hath he not called. Because Solomon was the rightful heir to the throne. Read. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while she yet talketh with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So Nathan came in after her, like they spoke about. Read. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? So he come to David and say, Hey, what, what's going on? Because Adonijah is about to be king. Did you set this up? Is, if, is this of your counsel? Read. For he is gone down this day and have slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance and have called all the king's sons and the captains of the host and Abathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him and say, God save King Adonijah. But me, even thy servant and Zadok the priest and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, thy servant Solomon, have he not called? Is this thing because he knew that they understood that it was supposed to be Solomon. Read. Is this thing done by my lord the king? And hast thou not showed it unto thy servant who shall sit on the throne of my of my lord the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Stop. Some, somebody tell me, uh, let me see if the sisters get it. Tell me the significance of what just happened. Read verse 27 again, officer. Verse 27. Verse 27 and 28. Is this the thing done by my lord, the king, and thou hast not showed it unto thy servant, who shall sit on the throne of the lord, the king, after, my, after him? And King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Brothers, y'all, y'all pick up, and, I, and I'm, uh, I'm happy out a little bit. The her mannerisms, anybody pick up on it? You got it. What you got? Right here, in front of Quinn. Let me, let me hear. Um, she, um, she uh, dealt with him respectfully, like calling him Lord and everything. So uh, she didn't uh, deal with him disrespectfully. Okay. Um, yes, uh, give me a little bit more. What's, what's happened? What can you tell from these two verses, specifically verse 28? Anybody want to have them out? Any of the brothers want to have them out? Sisters? I know you know, man. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, let's hear from Amaziah. Is she questioning his actions? Mm, no. No. Not, 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 not quite. What you got, Laya? Take a swing. Uh, she came when he was called. When she, when he called her, Me he came. Okay, right. So meaning what? When o obedience? Yeah, you right. Uh, you, I don't know if you know how you right. You right. Give me a little bit more. Uh, it says she, she, just, just for the sake of time, it says she. I mean, you said she came when she was called. So that means that when Nathan and David were speaking. She left. She had that respect for them, and she came back when she was called. But it, it, I'm just showing you the mannerisms in the sisters back then and how they dealt with the men, right? It was already, always a high level of respect for the men. So I just want to show you all this thing. And also how she called him Lord, so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Give me First Peter. Chapter 3. First Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. The book of First Peter, chapter 3, and verse 1. Let me get that. Likewise. Oh. Let me get that. I'm sorry. I was in Second Peter. Go ahead. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. So this is the correct mindset that a sister should have. She has to be in subject to her own husband. Meaning, when a sister get married, she, ha she has to understand that when problems arise in the marriage, she can't run to Captain such and such or officers. You got to deal with the Lord, right? Read on. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And, and, this, is, and this is talking about a, a sister who may have a, a Lord that's not in the truth. It say that he may... He could be won over by her righteous actions, her showing herself in uh, submitting to him, right? Even though he may not believe, right? Because sometimes it takes time. But I, it's something I want to pull out of verse 3, I think it is. Read on. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that of outward adorning. So let not the adorning be of the outwardness, right? The braided hair the costly array, the clothes, the heels, all those things are good, but that's not, again, that's not what all the sisters should be about. Read. Of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. So this is, this is who a brother, this is who a brother is getting to know when he's proven. It, it says the hidden, the hidden man of the heart meaning the hidden person of the mind, meaning, again, someone's actions is going to show. I mean, let me say it right. Someone's actions is going to show based off what's up here, right? So you, 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 you proven to get to know who someone really is. Read verse 4 again. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, mm -hmm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So a, a sister have to put on a meek and quiet spirit. Officer Gazelle, let's get the definition of meek right quick. Say a sister have to adorn herself with a meek and quiet spirit. <clears throat> you know, you, you hear um, in the world, sisters, sisters be like, I need a man that can handle me. Brothers don't want to have to handle a woman. That, that's not what we want. You go, you go to work 12 hours a day, you, you come home and then you got to handle something. Nah, that, brother don't want that. That ain't what we looking for in the, in the help meet. <clears throat> um, read that for me, officer. The definition of meek. Quiet. What? Quiet. What? Quiet. What? Quiet. A quiet wife is what a brothers want. Right, brothers? Yes, quiet woman. That don't mean this, this and I, this is just a woman thing. My rib do it too. Brother, you get off. You get off work. Sometimes the sister will catch you on the way home. You ain't even got home yet, <laughs> and, and she'll have a thousand things she wants you to take care of. You ain't even. 
you know, wind down. When brothers, when, when brothers get home from work, sisters, we like to wind down because we're we, we having to deal with the boss man. We're having to deal with the, the brother at work that won't act right. So we, we be feeling like we're going to have to knock out sometimes, right? The, the uh, immodest sister at work, brothers be dealing with all that. When we get home, brothers just want to relax. We want to unwind. Read on, officer. So a uh, synonym or the definition for meek is quiet. Read. Gentle. And a brother likes a gentle woman. So in, instead of when the brother step in the house, you asking him to run back to the store for some diapers or some wipes, maybe it would be good to have the brother a glass of wine. Right? Just, just some hints. Brothers, brothers like a little wine, right? Brothers like a little straw. Ain't nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> Maybe greet the brother with the children at the door, right? <laughs> a read on offs. And easily imposed on. Mm, and easily imposed on. You know what that means? <clears throat> that sister is malleable. Get the definition of malleable, officer. They, they got a good uh, synonym, submissive. That's what that means. I want uh, malleable, though. A sister that's malleable. Officer Hosher, can you give me the precept that says, uh, precept about having a wife after your mind? Can you give me that in Sarah? You know what I'm talking about? And I can maybe, find it for you. Okay, maybe chapter seven. <clears throat> so this is the definition. Let me see. Um, I got it. Can you read the second definition? The definition of malleable, easily influenced, pliable. Pliable, easily influenced. That's what a man wants, a sister that's easily influenced. Because the scriptures say that the, the man is given the woman... And she's supposed to have, I mean, she's supposed to be a help meet for him. So brothers don't need the sister to have her own mind. She has to have his mind. She has to do the things pleasing to him. She has to learn how to love him. That's, her, that's the, her, her whole reason for being created. Uh, read, read the um, precept, officer. The book of Sirach, chapter 7. In verse 26. Oh, see, uh, oh, shit, it's hot, man. You killing me, man. Can you turn it down like four degrees? <laughs> you got hatred in your heart. <laughs> All right, go, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, officer. Go, go ahead, officer. Hosher. Sirach chapter 7, verse 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? So the Bible says, this is, this is the Bible's instruction to the man. It says, if you have a woman that's after your mind, read. Forsake her not. Never leave that woman. Sisters want to know how to get the man and how to keep the man? God is telling you. Read it again. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. The Bible says to forsake, the, forsake her not. Don't, don't forsake that woman. Stay with that woman because in today's society, it's not a lot of women that have that mindset. Now, it's easy for the sisters to learn that here in the truth, but it still has to be learned, right? The Bible says not to forsake a woman like that. Read. But give not thyself over to a light woman. And don't give yourself over to a light sister. Meaning a sister who don't reason Reason doesn't come forth before she act, right? You, you always got to get on the sister about the most simple, the most simple things. You say, Here's, sister, here's $50 to go shopping, and then the sister go to Dollar General <laughs> to the discount aisle and just buy a whole bunch of stuff that's not needed. That, that's, that's a light, right? Stuff like that. Now, I'm, saying you, I'm not saying you can't catch good deals and things like that. But if the intent was for you to go pick up wipes, diapers, cleaning supplies, food, then that's what it is. 
That's what it is. Read it again, officer. Oh, sorry. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. But give not yourself over unto a light woman. Um, what's, what's that precept? Let me see. Um, Sirach 22 and 4. I was trying to see if I had it wrote down. Let me see. Um, not that one. That one's good. Sirach 36. 36, 23. Let me see what that say. I'm going to show, show the sister something. Sirach 36, 20. Yep, 23. The... The book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 23. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men? So it says if a, if a, if a sister and she have kindness, meekness, comfort in her tongue, meaning her speech, the way she carry herself, it says her husband is not like other men, meaning he got him something special. Meaning, the sister adds value to the man by being that way. Because every man ain't got, every man don't have that. That's how, that's how a woman adds value to a man's life. It's not necessarily about how much you make. That's good. But at the end of the day, a brother would rather a sister that's submissive and let me go out and make the money, you take care of the household, than a sister who bring a lot of money into the house, but she a dragon. Get me uh, Sirach 7 and 26. This is the I. This is the I within the acronym. The I is for intellect. So the scriptures say, don't give yourself over to a light woman. The I is for intellect. Sirach... Chapter 7, verse 20. Oh, we, we, we just read that. Yes, we just, sir. We just read that. Get me, um, um, read it real quick and then get Judith 5 and 11. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 26. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a like woman. So it says not to give yourself over to a like woman. Meaning, make sure the sister got some sense. Because brothers ain't right, but sometimes sisters ain't right either. You can go both ways. Judith chapter 5, verse 11. Let me see if that's what I want. Um, yeah, we, we're going to do a good bit of reading, um, officer. I may cut it about halfway through, um, but you can, you can start at verse 11. The book of Judith chapter 5 and verse 11. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. So this is talking about us in Egypt. Read. Then they cried unto their God and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight and God dried the Red Sea before them and he brought them to Mount Sinai and Cades Barne. And cast forth all they that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And they destroyed by their strength all of them in Esbron. And passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country. And they cast forth before them the Canaanites, the Pharisites, the Jebusites, the Sichemites, the Gergesites. And they dwelt in the country many days. What, brothers, real quick, what book can you find this history in? Anybody know? Who, who was leading us in prophecies then? You know Soji Jeremiah? Soji Lael? This was during the time of uh, Joshua. During the time of Joshua. All right, read on, officer. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered, because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into lands that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now they are returned to their God and are come up from the places where they were scattered 
and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. So this is so this is the history. This is the heathen talking about our history. This is during the time of Judah. Read on. I mean Judas. Sorry. Read on. And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people standing round about the tent murmured, and the chief men of Holophanes and all that dwelt by the seaside and in Moab spake that he should kill him. For say they, we will not be afraid of the face of the children of Israel. For lo, it is a people that have no strength nor power for a strong battle. Now, therefore, Lord Herlophanes, we will go up and they shall be a prey to devour all to be devoured of all thine army. So they was looking to come and subdue us, destroy us. Just giving y'all the, the backstory on what was going on um, with Judith and her story about how she was found to be uh, a wise and understanding woman. Just giving y'all the backdrop. Uh, read on, chapter 6. And when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Herlophanes, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, said unto Achior, and all of the Moabites before all the company of other, of other nations. And who art thou, Achior, the hirelings of Ephraim, that thou hast prophesied among us today, and hast said that we should not make war with the people of Israel, because their God will defend them? And who is God but Nebuchadnezzar? He will send his power and will destroy them for the face of the face of the earth. And their God shall not deliver them. But we, his servants, will destroy them as one man. For they are not able to sustain the power of our horses. For with them we, we will tread them underfoot. And their mountains shall be drunken with their blood. And their fields shall be filled with their dead bodies. And their footsteps shall not be able to stand before us, for they shall utterly perish, saith King Nebuchadnezzar, Lord of all the earth. For he said, None of my words shall be in vain. And thou, Achior, the hireling of Ammon, which thou hast spoken these words in the day of thy iniquity, shall see my face no more from this day, until I take vengeance of this nation that came out of Egypt. Right. Jump to verse um, 12. Verse 12. And when the men of the city saw them, they took up their weapons and went out of the city to the top of the hill. And every man that used a sling kept them from coming up by casting of stones against them. Nevertheless, having gotten privily under the hill, they bound Achior and cast him down and left him at the foot of the hill and returned to their Lord. But the Israelites descended from their city and came unto him and loosed him. And brought him to Bethulia, and presented him before the gov pre presented him to the governors of the city. So the, the fighting has commenced between us and, and the heathen at this time. Read on. Which were in those days Ozias the son of Micah, the tribe of Simeon, and Cabras the son of Gothoniel, and Carmus the son of Melchiel, Melchiel, Melchiel. And they called together all the ancients of the city. And their youth ran together, and their women to the assembly. They set Achior in the midst of all their people. Then Ozias asked him of that which was done. So, so they captured the heathen. Achior was uh, Ammon? Ammonite. Ammonite, yeah. Okay, so uh, Achior was an Ammonite, so they, <coughs> Excuse me. they, they captured this, uh, this uh, Ammonite, and they bring him before the leaders of Israel, right? Just... Uh, to keep y'all sort of up on what's going on. So now he's sitting in the midst of the leadership. Read. And he answered and declared unto them the words of the council of Herlophanes and all the words that he had spoken in the midst of the princess of Asher and whatsoever Herlophanes had spoken proudly against the house of Israel. So now he's going to tell them what was said that we just read in Judah 5. Y'all with me? All right, read on. Then the people fell down and worshiped God and cried unto God, saying, O Lord, God of heaven, behold their pride 
and pity the lowest state of our nation and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day. Then they comforted Achior and praised him greatly. And Ozias took him out the assembly unto his house and made a feast to the elders. And they called upon the God of Israel all that night for help. So he, Achior told them, hey, uh, how laughing these them is coming. They plan on doing this and this and this. And they plan on laying total waste to y'all nation. Right? So the people began to, to pray and consult to the Most High. Read. The next day, Herlophanes commanded all his army and all his people which were come to take his part, that they should remove their camp against Bethulia, to take aforehand the ascent of the hill country and to make war against the children of Israel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of men of war was 170,000 footmen and 12,000 horsemen, beside the baggage and other men that were afoot among them, a very great multitude. And they camped in the valley near unto Bethulia by the fountain, and they spread themselves in the breadth over Dothium, even of Belmium, and the length of Bethulia unto Siamon, which is over Esdrelium. Now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, Now will these men lick up the face of the earth? For neither the high mountain, nor the valleys, nor hills are able to bear their weight. They, they got scared, read. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon their towers, they remained and watched all that night. But in the second day, Halophanes brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Israel, which were in Bethulia, and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them and set garrisons of men of war over them, and he himself removed towards his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the seacoast, and said, Let our Lord now hear a word, that there be not an overthrow in thine army. For this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now, therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in a battle array, and there shall not as much one man of thy people perish. Remain in thy camp, and keep all the, keep all the men of thine army, and let thy servant get into the hands of, hands of the fountain of water, which issueth forth the foot of, of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Bethulia have their water thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city. And we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountain that are near and will camp upon them to watch that none go out of the city. Stop. One of the brothers, tell me what's going on. Uh, they're cutting off their supplies, getting ready for war. They're going to try to starve them out in a sense. Right, right. <clears throat> Wait one second. <clears throat> Follow-up question. <clears throat> Where else did that happen in our history? The, maybe the most common one, I'll say. And uh, the besiegement of Jerusalem in 70 AD. That's correct. All praises. So write that down, brothers. Follow-up question. Where is that written that that would happen to us? Because it's a reoccurring thing. It happened then, right? It happened in 70 AD, and it's happening now. That's why they burning up all the crops, right? Got these random fires and these food facilities, so on and so forth. Leadership has been preparing us for the famine that's coming, right? For the shortage of food. The tactic is different, but it's the same, um, give me a word. Same what? Huh? The, the same, same plot. The same, the same plot, the same outcome, the same uh, strategy. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. So where is it that is written that that will happen to us? It's that, uh, Deuteronomy 28. 50 or 49. Right. Do, Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> For the sake of time, uh, we don't have to get it. Let me, let me call it, though. Y'all can write it in your notes. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28. Let's get the right verse. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 52 on down to 56. That's the curse. That's why it keeps happening. It's, it's a curse in Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> Again, 
Let me call it again. Deuteronomy 28, 52 to 56. That's the curse that's happening to us at this point. All right, officer, uh, you can continue. The book of Judah, chapter 7, verse 14. So they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with famine, and before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Thus shalt thou render them an evil reward, because they rebelled and met not thy person peaceably. And all these words pleased Herlophanes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken. So the camp of the children of Ammon departed, and with them 5,000 of the Assyrians, and they pitched in the valley and took the waters and the fountains of the waters of the children of Israel. Jump to verse 19. Verse 19. Then the children of Israel cried unto the Lord God, their God, because their heart failed, for all their enemies had compassed them round about, and there was no way to escape out from among them. Thus all the company of Ashur remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, four and thirty days, so that all their vessels of water failed, all in the inhabitants of Bethulia, and the cisterns were wait, wait, ample. Wait, so we gave out of water. So... Um, jump to verse 23. Same chapter, verse 23. Verse, 20, verse 23. Then all the people assembled to Ozias, to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children, and cried with a loud voice and said before all the elders, God be judged between us and you, for ye have done us great iniquity, injury. And that ye have not required peace of the children of Ashur. For now we have no helper, but God hath sold us into their hands, that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Now therefore call them unto you, and deliver the whole city for a spoil to the people of Herlophanes and to all his army. So, so what do you have? The, the condition is so hard that some of our people are just ready to give up. What they pretty much saying is, let the heathen, hey, let them come, do what they're going to do, and things will be better for us. That's pretty much what they're saying. Let them have their way. Read. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them than to die for thirst. For we will be his servants that our souls may live and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children to die. We take to witness against you the, the heaven and the earth and our God and our Lord of our fathers, which punisheth us according to our sins and the sins of our fathers, that he do not according as we have said this day. Then there was a great weeping with one consent in the midst of the assembly, and they cried unto the Lord God with a loud voice. Then said Ozias to them, Brethren, be of good courage. Let us yet endure five days in the which space the Lord God may turn his mercy towards us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass and there come no help unto us, I will do according to your word. Damn. So <clears throat> what's going on is the people saying, let them have their way. Let them come in, spoil the city, take who they're going to take captive, and we'll just uh, deal with the repercussions later. That's the... That's the um, that's the council that's going on. And then um, Ozias say, okay, let's wait five days, see what the Lord going to do. If he don't do nothing, then I'm going to take that council. But that was, that was the wrong way to go about it because now they're tempting the Lord. Okay, Lord, help us or forget it. You understand what I mean? So now when you get to Judah, if you understand what's going on with her, and why she was so revered for, for what she done. So now jump to chapter 8, and let's read all the way to um, 20, 1 to 20. The book of Judah, chapter 8 and verse 1. Now at that time Judah heard thereof, which was the daughter of Merari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elsia, the son of Anias, the son of Gideon, the son of Rapham, the son of Akito, 
the son of Elihu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samael, the son of, son of Salasadai, the son of Israel. And Manestas was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothium and Balamo. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. So we read this again. Let's not forget the thought to see and, ex and examine the mannerisms of the sisters and how they dealt back then. Read. And she made her a tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wear her widow's apparel. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbath and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feast and the solemn days of the house of Israel. So the sister fasted on a regular basis, right? Today, that would be the sister participating in the bi, the bi monthly fast, at least. We don't. She was also of goodly countenance and very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manassas had left her gold and silver. So the sister took care of herself and said she was beauty. That's, that's a relative. So we know the sister took care of herself. Read. And men servants and maid servants and cattle and land. And she remained upon them. And there was none that gave her an ill word, for she feared God greatly. And she had a good report. So they had a good report. They know, hey, um, we can depend on Sister Judith. Read. Now when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words that Elzias had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. Then she sent her waiting woman that had the government of all things that she had to call Ozias and Chabris and Charmis, the ancients of the cities. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, O ye governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right, touching this oath which ye have made and pronounced between God and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days the Lord will turn to help you. And now who are ye that ye have tempted God this day, and stand instead of God amongst the children of men? And now try the Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything, for ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can ye perceive the thing that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out God that hath made all these things, and know his mind, and comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our God to anger. So she show, she's showing obeisance. She being humble about it. it ain't, she not being rah-rah, right? Even though she was a high of a state, but, but they had, he had money. So he, you know, she was known in the community. It wasn't like she was just, I don't want to say a regular sister, but she wasn't just a regular sister. She, she was well known, like it said in verse 8. You know, she, she had a good report. Read on. For if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God, for God is not as man, that he may be threatened. Neither is he as the son of man, that he should, that he should be wavering. Therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice if it please him. For there arose none in our age, neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe nor family nor people nor city among us which worship gods made with hands as hath been before time. For the which cause our fathers were given to the sword and for a spoil and had a great fall before our enemies. Jump to verse 24. Verse 24. Now therefore, O brethren, let us shew an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, 
and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. Stop real quick. Let me, let me gauge the sisters a little bit. What's significant about what she's, how she's giving advice? I think because she related it to our forefathers, Isaac, yes. Abraham, and Jacob. Yes. So she had knowledge of the scriptures. I mean, Judith study. Not only was she she pretty, a lot of times, most of the time, sister named herself Judith. It'd be because she's very confident in her looks. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying that's a problem, but Judith had brains also. She wasn't light. She wasn't light. Read on, officer. Verse 27. Um, verse 27. For he have not tried us in the fire as he did them for the examination of their hearts. Neither have he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them. Then said Ozias to her, all that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. For this is not the first day when thy wisdom is manifested. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding because of the disposition of thine heart is good. So uh, this is this is, again, to show that this sister was she knew the scriptures. Right. Not only did she have the looks, but she had the brains also. So that's how sisters today. That's a sister for the sisters to model themselves after. Right. So. Get me uh, Proverbs 31. Uh, every sister's favorite chapter. Am I right, sisters? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> right. Every sister's favorite chapter. Maybe. Maybe that's just my mind. Read verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. He said, who can find a virtuous woman? Because that woman, her price is above any amount of um, money that you can give. And this is why. Go back to, go back to was it 1 Peter 3? And read verse, read verse 4. This is why her price is above rubies. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 4. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me see. Um, yes. Start at verse 3. Three, Ver three and 3, and then read to 4. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So it's the things... It's the things that's, uh, that comes from within that it's talking about, right? Meekness, um, a quiet spirit, not the adorning of the hair, and so on and so forth. Read, read that last part. Which is in the sight of God of great price. So that's how, that, that lets you know the Proverbs uh, 31 woman, the one who prices above rubies, is because God said this woman is of, of a great value if she has these traits. Y'all understand what I'm saying, sisters? That's, that's how the most high look at that thing. That, that's what a high, um, how do you say it? A high value woman is, right? This woman. Not because you got your own car, you got your own house, you got your own job, you don't need a man, you can do it yourself. What else sisters be saying? Right, I don't, I don't have no kids. Uh, right, I got a degree, right? Uh, those things are okay, but it's the inward things. It's the inward things. It's the quietness. It's the being a good wife. That's what it boils down to. Um, go back to Proverbs 31 and 10 also. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. That sister is invaluable, priceless. 
right? Y'all, what, what, what was that commercial that used to come on? It'd be like coffee, $3, cheeseburger, $5, and then something, it would always be priceless. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? What was that? It was Jay Drillers? Dang. So that, that's how it is, right? A house costs this much money. A car costs this much money, this much money. Maybe this much money to start your own business, right? This much money for diapers, clothes, and such on, such, 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 right? But a virtuous woman is priceless. Read on. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. All right, question for the sisters. Question for the sisters. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up. We're running out of time. Real quick. Why does the heart of the husband safely trust in her? Why? Let me see what this is thinking. Um, I would say because he doesn't have to worry about her um, while he's gone or while he's, say he's at camp or something, he doesn't have to worry about if she's doing what she has to do. Um, if okay. she's You're right. Why, though? Oh, because she's following the she's following the commandments and she's um you hot she's <laughs> give me a little bit more I'm looking for a little bit more a little bit more um, she's in her role as the as the wife she's am I no go go ahead go ahead go ahead bring it out <laughs> you're doing good bring it out um yeah she's. I like how you were. She's following. She's in her role that God made her to be in, right? She's right. not trying to be the, the His man. His equal or over Correct. him. Correct, right? Okay. That's good. I'll take that. Any sister want to add on to that? Want to give a little bit more? I was going to say she's doing Genesis 3.16, following after his mind. Okay, I like that. Let me see what the sister back here was going to say. Um, I was going to say basically the same thing, Sirach 726, a mind after her Lord's mind. Okay, that's what I wanted. All praises. All those answers are right. I just wanted the precept we went over. All praises. Good job, sisters. All right. Um, jump to verse 26, officer. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 26. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Like Judith, like Bathsheba. Who was Bathsheba, brothers? All right, like Bathsheba. <laughs> <laughs> like Sarah, like who else? Give me some more names. Abigail. I forgot about Abigail. Esther. So on and so forth, right? Read on. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Last night, the brothers was talking uh, in the room back there, and we was making the point how when you go to a, a restaurant, the kindness that the waitress have when you go, had a nice... They soft, they gentle. That's the kindness uh, uh, a sister should have when she deal with her Lord. It should be like that. Shalom, my Lord, can I get you anything? It should be, it should be just like that, to the T. Right, brothers? That, that, that thing was on point. I think it was Captain Sarai bringing the thing, all right? Yeah, that, that thing was on point, man. The waitress shouldn't treat your man better than you, sisters. It shouldn't be like that. Captain Sarai said it. I didn't, I didn't say that. I just said it sounds good. Sound good. All right. Get um, Proverbs uh, 23 and 7. Do I want that? Mm. We, we, we can skip that. Give me, let's do the R for the sake of time. Let's do the R. The R is for report. So, brothers, prove a sister with a good report. Make sure the sister have a good report. That's what they are for. Officer, get me 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12. First, get me 1 Timothy 3. Because we, we know about this with, for the brothers, but it applies to the sisters also. Uh, which verse? Uh, 1 Timothy um, 3 and 7. Yes. The book of First Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 7. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Can one of the sisters explain it? This is talking about a brother. It said he had, must have a good report of them without. 
I just want to know that first part. What it, what it means, sisters? Um, the good report without is like when you're out in the world, your job, or just people without that, that's not in the body. Okay. Okay. Meaning a good report of what, though? Okay. I'll take that. That's good. Very good. Very good. So now on the flip side, First Thessalonians 5 and 12. <clears throat> The book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 12. Remember, the, the Bible is written in the masculine tense, but this is talking about for sisters also. Go ahead. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. So brothers is proven. You have to know the sisters that labor among you. Get beseeched right quick, Officer Kazea, real quick. A lot of times we, we read past that thing, but Paul is really... Uh, expressing something. Beseech. So, beseech. Can you read that, Officer uh, Yosh? The definition of beseech. To ask someone urgently or fervently to do something, implore, entreat. So, he's pretty, pr to pretty much to beg. So, read it again. Um. Five and twelve. Verse 12, and we beseech you, brethren. So Paul is saying, I beg you, brother, because this is a serious matter, right? To know them which labor among you. Know the sisters that labor among you. I remember um, before I got married, when I came to the truth, I was putting in the work, right? Putting in the work. I never let it be an issue of whether or not I was proven. Well, I didn't press the issue to be quick to find a wife. But... The whole time I was watching to see which sisters was putting in the work, which sisters was around the leadership wives, which sisters was always off by themselves, which sisters had a good attendance. You got to pay attention, right? Read it again. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love that's, for their work's sake. That's it. So know those that labor among you. You can get a report of a, of a brother, sister. You can get a report of a sister, brother. But it's up to you at the end of the day, at the end of the day, to prove them and see if that report is true, right? Sometimes people are fooled by representatives. You got to um, be able to confirm that report for yourself. Because you, you got to take the sister in marriage. Give me um, 1 Timothy 5 and 14. Let me see what that say. I wrote it down. I don't think I wanted it. Let me see. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know why I wrote this down. Start at verse um, 11 and read down to 14. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 11. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ. So, they, this, is, so this is the law, just to let everybody know the general, generalization of it. This is the law of the widows. It was a law that if, uh, if the church was going to take care of a widow, then she had to have these qualifications. She had to do this, A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. But Paul comes back and says... Read verse 11 again. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Meaning the younger sisters who are widows, don't, don't take care of them. Because when they begin to uh, start lusting, then they're going to start back dealing with a man. They're going to go out and get some rod, so y'all can understand what I'm saying. Read on. Having damnation... Because they have cast off their first faith. Which is Christ. Which is, which is the truth, putting in the work, right? Read. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. So a sister shouldn't be idle. She should be, a, the, the sisters have just as big of a part in this ministry as the men. Now the men, there's certain things that only we can do, and most of the work is on us. But sisters have their part in this ministry too. It's things that is required of y'all also, right? Read. And not only idle, 
but tattlers Sis- also. Sisters shouldn't be gossiping about other sisters. I know, I know that's a big thing for women, gossiping. Sisters shouldn't be doing that, especially in the truth, right? You see the sister every day, but between you and another sister, you feel a completely different way, right? Or are you running around telling everybody business, right? And busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Mm-hmm. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry. But the younger women should aim uh, and ready themselves for marriage, right? Bear children. Guide the house. Uh, uh, a sister that's looking to prove should uh, have some knowledge of how to guide a house. Read. And give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach, reproachfully. Now, question for the sisters. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up soon. We're going to wrap it up. How can a sister learn all of these qualities? How can she learn these things? It's not YouTube. From the married sisters um, amongst the body of the, the men, like From leadership, leadership wise. Okay. Uh, what, what precept you got? You got a precept? Ooh. Got it. Titus 2. Titus 2. I was about to say, sis. <laughs> All right, get that for me, y'all see your show. <laughs> we got to have a talk to Sister Chances after the class. All praises, sis. Uh, read that for me, Elvis. Which verse? Um, start at verse uh, 4. The book of Titus, chapter 2, and verse 4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So, the sisters mentioned the Titus 2, right? That's another thing brothers should look for. To see, and that should be part of your communication. Um, see, see if she's paying attention and retaining the things that's spoken about in the Titus 2 meetings, right? And then, because that's how she's gonna learn to be a helper for you. If the sister's never in the Titus 2 meetings or the sister circle after the Sabbath, or she ain't never speaking to her big sister, sister, she, she might be light, right? Or she may be consulting with somebody her age, inevitably, sister might be light, right? So God says, read it again, officer. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, Mm -hmm. to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So a sister needs to learn all these things to some degree before she's married. Because with the brothers, it's prerequisites, right? We got to learn how to hold a steady job. We got to... have a means of transportation, we gotta have a, a, a house, we gotta be able to provide food, right? Damn, brother said no. Bro, men, ain't gotta, men ain't gotta provide this stuff. <laughs> all right, all right. So, is, you know, it's things on both ends that needs to be learned. Give me, give me Proverbs 30 and 31, and then give me Sirach 36 and 24, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, Proverbs 30 and 31. Um, Proverbs 31 and 30. I'm sorry if I said it backwards. Proverbs 31 and 30. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So uh, a sister that's steadfast in this truth, is putting in work, is building herself up, is getting ready for marriage, says that. Uh, sister is going to be praised, meaning that's the sister that the elder sisters are going to be able to give a, a report about, right? Sirach 36, 24. Then we'll end it with that. Um, I did have another preset. Let me see what it says real quick. The book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 24. He that getteth a wife begetteth a possession. So it says, a man that gets a wife, beget of what? A possession. What does that mean, brothers? A man that gets a wife begins a possession. I mean, he's supposed to take care of her because he's the head, the provider. And then... Take care of meaning what? 
Like he's supposed to keep her flossing and all the latest Gucci, Chanel. No. What you mean? Like providing, like. Okay. Okay. All right. You're right. You're right. Let me hear what the other IT got. Yeah. So basically, when a man gets married, his ministry then changes. Um, he has responsibilities. With, along with a wife comes a family. You got to provide for them, take care of them. You also have to teach her. Um, when it says that he'll, she'll become a, a wife like after him, she, her mind will become like his mind. She'll become a pillar of rest. It's those things that he's instilling in her that he has to instill in her so that she can become that. So it's more than just... Um, Okay, I'll she do he, I'll fall. Yes, sir. Yeah, you good. It's like, he's good, man. He's straight. That, that, that's good. Um, real quick, then we're going to end it. Let, let me see what the sisters got. What do what they mean, sisters? Help the brothers out. I know the sisters know. They begin to establish their household um, in their name, building up their family in the, in the truth and the laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay. In, in the, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. We got the thought. So let me ask you this. In verse 24, who's the possession? Okay. So it says a man begins a possession, right? So, so what is it saying? That he begins to possess his wife, to okay. have her, to okay. take care of her, okay. to build her up, um, and to establish his house in his name. I'll praise, I'll praise. That, that's what it means. I just wanted, I wanted to see what the sister was going to say. But that's what it means. A man that gets a wife, he begins a possession. So <clears throat> to use an analogy, maybe the brothers maybe get a little bit more. The single brothers. I know you know a lot of the brothers married. It's like you get a car. When a man, when a man get a car, right, you're going to make sure that car clean all the time, right? You got a new car, right? <laughs> you going to make sure that car clean. You're going to make sure the oil change. You're going to make sure... It's, it's always gas in it, right? You're going to make sure it smells good, right? So, um, like the officer was saying, <clears throat> you got you to take care of the possession. You got to put in time with the possession. Everything that we read prior to this verse, you got to do all those things to, to build that sister up, to be the woman that has a mind after your own. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.